Our journey through Constable Country begins here in the Dedham Vale on the Essex-Suffolk border. It was in these fields and by this river that a young John Constable honed the skills that would one day lead to his great works of art. Away from the main village of East Burgholt is the hamlet of Flatford, where Golding Constable owned this mill. It's now owned by the National Trust and leased to the Field Studies Council. Flatford provided John Constable with the setting for a number of England's best-loved paintings, including the Haywain, which he painted in his London studio in 1821. And visitors here can still see Willie Lott's cottage in a setting unchanged in generations. In common with East Burgholt, Dedham too enjoyed a successful cloth trade and this beautiful master weaver's house is a wonderful reminder of that time. Despite the wool trade ending, the village prospered, as is evident from the many Georgian house fronts built onto the old timbered buildings behind. The third of John Constable's religious paintings, Christ Blessing the Elements, is here in the church of St James in the parish of Nayland with Whiston. It was commissioned in 1809 by his aunt, who lived in the village, and it's the only one of his three altar pieces that remains in the place for which it was originally painted. A couple of miles from Hadley is one of the most picturesque villages in the region, Kersey. Famous for the ford in the main street and for giving its name to a coarse woolen material, Kersey cloth. But if you're looking for a rival in the best looking village competition, then visit beautiful Boxford another of Suffolk's attractive medieval villages. It sits by the River Box, a stream-like tributary of the Stour, and the Church of St Mary, which has the finest 14th century wooden porch in the county, looks out from a rise over the main street. John Constable was no stranger to Lavenham, but his earliest memories of time spent in the village weren't happy ones. At the age of 11, he came here as a boarder to the old grammar school in Barnes Street, but because of frequent beatings by staff, he was moved to the day school in Dedham. Lavenham's history is a rich one. The first settlement dates back to Saxon times, but it was in the Middle Ages that the village became nationally important. In the latter part of the 14th century, King Edward imposed a hefty tax on the exports of English wool to the continental weavers to raise money for the war with France. That meant it was more profitable to weave here. And as a result, Lavenham became the... When the Stour Navigation Act was passed in 1705, it opened the way for cargoes to be transported up and down this river. To accommodate all that traffic, this sidearm and basin were dug, turning Sudbury into a river port. And for the next 150 years, this would have been a very busy place as lighters were loaded and offloaded with the various goods carried on the water. With the coming of the railway in 1849, though, river traffic declined and the Stour became unnavigable, ending a century and a half of commercial life in this part of Sudbury. But life is returning to the river, thanks to good work from members of the River Stour Trust, and the plan is to open it up for navigation once more, in the hope of making it possible to travel the 25 miles by water all the way back from Sudbury to the Dedham Vale, where our journey began. <laughs> 